you know, I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the ladies here, to all the mothers and grandmothers. And I'm going to embarrass you real quickly. If you would stand, our mothers and grandmothers, would you just take a stand? We don't recognize you enough, and we want to this morning. God bless you, and husbands, dads out there, please, please uh, spoil that uh, special person in your life today. You know, this morning is a special Sunday. We have quite a, a bit today going on in our worship. Today, we have Deb Bonzel. Deb is the longtime student director uh, of ministries at Salem Covenant Church in Oakland, Nebraska. And she's here this morning. She is going to share an initiative that is happening in the Midwest Conference right now with the women's ministries. And she's going to talk about a, a covenant Bible camp that we have in the Appalachian Mountains in Jonesville, Virginia. And I don't know if you know this, but Jonesville, Virginia, the Appalachian Mountain area is one of the poorest areas in this country. And, you know, for the last, I would say, 15 to 20 years, we've been kind of spoiled by Covenant Cedars Bible Camp. We really have some wonderful facilities at Covenant Cedars. Not all camps are as blessed as Covenant Cedars. And so Deb's going to talk a little bit about this mission priority that we have occurring at Covenant Mission Mountain Bible Camp, right? I'm, yeah, I was close. You'll get to, you'll, you'll correct me when you get up and speak. So she's going to talk about this more about that this morning, and we are actually going to take a retiring offering for that ministry at the conclusion of our worship service today. We have a, a plate on the back table there, and if you would like to, to give towards this, um, we would just encourage you to do so out of generosity. So as we enter into a time of worship, let's go ahead and bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, on this very special day of days that we call Mother's Day. We come to worship you, our great Father in heaven, and we know that you're not just in heaven. You are here with us today, Lord. Your presence is all about us. Your Holy Spirit is intertwined with our lives and shaping us to be the people that you've called us to be through your Son, Jesus. And I pray now, Lord, that Whatever we bring in to worship this morning, you would just quiet our souls so that we can listen and hear from you today. We pray, Lord, that we would glorify you now as we sing songs together in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to invite you guys to stand with us.
thank you, God, for your love. We thank you that you were willing to die on the cross for us before we were even born. Lord, and we thank you for the women that you placed in our lives that have been just examples of your love and your nurturing spirit, Lord. We are so grateful for you and your love this morning. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. morning. My name is Joni Dirksen, and I am the mother <laughs> to Peyton and Maya Dirksen. My journey to motherhood was a bit different than most. Because of someone's sacrifice, I was be able to become a mother. Mother's Day wasn't a day I looked forward to prior to having children, as it almost took us almost 10 years to finally become parents. Although those 10 years were some of the most wonderful years. It was incredibly painful watching friends, sisters, coworkers all become mothers, and I was left behind. Enough of this sad stuff, because a good thing came. Fast forward to having children. The minute I held my girls for the first time, I knew that this was exactly where I was supposed to be. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Matt preached about trusting God's timing. It was so easy to get caught up in my own timing, wondering when I was going to have kids. But God had his own timing all along. And it was perfect timing. So even though I had to go through some pretty hard stuff, I wouldn't change this journey for anything. I pray that I'm doing everything I can to instill my Christian beliefs to my girls. And when I see their love for this church and for Jesus, I think I'm doing okay. Thank you. Thank you, Joni. this song that we probably all know, but as we sing it, I just want it to serve as a reminder that as parents, as adults, just as people, as Christians, the love that we have and the light that we have through Jesus is meant to go into the world. It's meant to be a light in the darkness. The Lord is able to give hope and restore through us. So I want to invite you to sing this with us, but if you can, in your heart and your mind, sing it as a new song that we're not talking about just what the Lord can do, but what the Lord can do through us, like what Joni was able to do with her children and is still doing every day and what all of you are doing by being here, worshiping the Lord on Sunday morning. You are bringing light into the darkness. Verse one more time, you give life. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken.
have some so I have some CMJ people are Shirley and Norm where are they oh they took off I guess okay so um, CMJ um, compassion mercy and justice and it, this fits in pretty well with what's going to happen after this um, basically we, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that we have a really hitch or hitch really rich history of doing mission work and um, it all started if Ethan if you want to put it up on the screen it all started about 1992 I had Merlin go through our history to try and find some things because I wasn't here but this is when we had several people go visit Reynosa which right now is being overrun by people coming across the borders but we had I think Marlene went and Daryl Swanson and Jack Johnson and I think um, one of the Limbeck girls and somebody else um, were down there. And you can go ahead and flip. There's two more slides. This is them. And I don't recognize any of those pictures. But um, then there's also a picture of them painting and building these. They look like clapboard houses to me. But they obviously were people in need and need to have housing. And that's what they did. I believe that they went down a couple of different times. And then after that. Um, I have my. The next picture would be. Um, go ahead and switch that. All right. The next one occurred when the B Big Thompson River um, broke through and it collided with the uh, uh, Poudre River and it all went into the South Platte River, just outside Greeley, Colorado, and there were a couple of streets of Hispanic residents that. Um, had been approached by multiple carpet baggers. And the water had come through, and you can see the water line on there. It came rushing through. They had very little time to grab their kids, their car, their pets, and ran out. And their houses were full with water. Go ahead and flip, Ethan. And we went down there for a long weekend, and we chipped tile and put up wallboard and all kinds of stuff. This happens to be a family who was working um, to, it was like a work ethic kind of thing where they, they fed us breakfast, they fed us um, dinner, and in the meantime, we ran back and forth to different houses doing various things. Go ahead and flip, Ethan. Um, at the end of the street, this was an entire community of uh, trailers, and as the water went through, it pushed every single one of them off their foundation, and the city had to go in and lock them all down. So you can see what the devastation is for that. But uh, go ahead and flip. But we're in a basement right now where the water was, uh, these were all split level homes and it just came rushing in. We're chipping off tile off the floor, tile off the walls, and uh, trying to lift it up out of basement windows and that kind of thing. And the one thing that happened is that we had to bring all of the stuff out to the streets for the city inspectors to take a look at it, know that it was used and it wasn't going to be reused. And if they weren't there to inspect us and give it an okay, then we had to turn around and take it back into the house for the next day because the carpet, um, the um, trash people and the, the pickers and whatever, they would come through and steal all the stuff and then they wouldn't be able to get their HVAC systems and that kind of thing. So go ahead and flip. So the next thing that we did, um, 
Well, there's another trip in there. We, we don't have a picture, but in 2013, Pastor Jody took a group of teenagers to the Rosebud Indian Reservation, and Jessica Kaiser was one of them. Emily Koopman was one of them. Not sure exactly what they all did, but I'm sure that they were ministering to the children and the teens that were there. Um, then this is 2016, and Pastor Jody called upon us. It's Steve Swanson and Ron and Shirley and I. And we went to Ecuador, and the people that you see there, they are part of the covenant officers within the, the state of Ecuador. And um, go ahead and flip. And we were just to, to work with them and try and find out, as a small church with limited resources, what is it could, that we could do. So this is a picture of the church itself. And they build right into the mountains. Uh, Quito, Ecuador is surrounded by like five huge mountains. And so the land space isn't great. So they build and dig into and build and dig into and the higher and higher they go. Well, unfortunately, at 10,000 whatever feet, there's multiple rainstorms and it comes down. They put plastic sheeting on so they don't lose their hill, but the water comes rushing down into the church through a, an opening that's about the size of your shower stall hole and then through the church and then down into the street. So there were multiple issues. These people had never received any help. They had never received any missionaries or anything. So this was kind of where the Ecuadorian Evangelical Covenant wanted us to go. Go ahead and flip. You can see that they use Coravate getting sheeting on their roof and it's rotted out and it was leaking through and right underneath that is where they had their um, altar for their musicians and that kind of thing. So their pianos and stuff were getting ruined. Go ahead, Ethan. This is the outside of the church. Uh, you can see the mountains in the background. Uh, they don't build like the way that the rest of us build. And so they build one level at a time, stick rebarb up, and then the, the, the uh, state can't tax them, and then they build another one, and then they leave rebarb, and then they build another one so they never get taxed. But they don't have the funds to do any of the upkeep for whatever they had. So this is what the outside of the church looks like. Go ahead. So beginning right here um, in 2018, Beth and I and Pam Randall and Tucker Randall and Ron and Shirley and I think that's it, right? Um, went back. This time we had a mission. We had raised funds. Um, if you were in the church at that time, then you were probably part of our fundraising effort. And you can see what used to be the old brick walls or whatever. Um, they had enough money to put plaster or stucco on the outside to make it look much more presentable. Go ahead. And this is Tucker and Ron working with those people, and they're digging some kind of a trench. There's no, it, it has to all be done by hand, and you do it their way. And so they were trying to dig a trench to make it deep enough and wide enough, put enough tubing in that when the water came rushing down off the hill that it wouldn't flood into the church. Go ahead. And a lot of moisture in Ecuador, and so these are their classrooms, and the paint was just peeling off horribly in there, so uh, Shirley and I and, and these gentlemen were tasked with uh, peeling off as much as the paint we could, and then they, would, they went back in and, and replastered. The whole time this is going on, we had um, a medical clinic going on there as well. We, ha we had got partnered with Saunders Medical Center and bought um, medications and whatever to take to them to use, and I'm going to let Beth speak to that just a little bit. Um, so Kim is one of our missions missionaries down there, and she's actually a nurse practitioner. And so her and I, and um, I had an um, interpreter with me the whole time, um, as well as we had another physician there, um, saw many uh, residents just that would come and see us. And um, actually, we would give them prescriptions, and they'd go to the pharmacy there to fill it. Um, but they are just all very grateful people and very hardworking people and have a very deep faith. And so it was very, um, not only did we do the work, but the um, just the Bible, not so much Bible study, but I guess just um, discussion about our faith and worship with them was very special and very meaningful. 
Yeah, we did a women's workshop. We did women's crafting. We had, it was also uh, Ecuador Children's Day. So we did activities one whole day just about that. Uh, Ron led a men's group and then we had a couples group one night. So it's not just about going and working and giving up your time that we were also um, trying to spread the word and, and they spread it just as much to us as we did to them. Um, go ahead. And so this was the last day that we were there. That was everybody that was in church, except for the person who was taking the picture. But um, really wonderful people. We really enjoyed them. Um, I think, uh, Ethan, is that the last one? OK, okay. so this is up in Kayambe, which is where um, the Delps do most of their work. And um, you can see Joel over, clear over on the left side with the white shirt. And um, it's just, we had an opportunity to, we didn't spend much time there, we just went and visited that day before we got on the airplane. And in a minute I'm gonna talk about Juan Montalvo, and his wife has the pink shirt on and she's hugging him, if you can see him kind of piggybacking on him. So he is uh, kind of the mastermind with the Delps in terms of getting uh, Casa Hogar and the Santiago mission um, all up and running in, Ca in Cayambe. Go ahead. Is that the last one? One more? Okay. Okay. All right. The last one. All right. So the reason for doing this today is the first time that we were there in 2016 where there was just the, the four of us, um, we had, as a church, we had donated money over the years to the Santiago Project. And when we left... They, um, Juan Montalvo and his wife presented us with this scarf. And for the last several years, it's been hiding in the East Room in a drawer. And so we decided it was time that we got this framed. And so, would you mind coming up and holding this? <laughs> so on the bottom of it, course, all in Spanish, and it says um, FACE, which is part of the um, organization that is, um, over, functions over this, uh, Centro Medico y Casa Hogar Emanuel La Iglesia del Pacto Evangelico Emanuel y la Fundación Amigos de Santiago Agrade Cimiento a Ceresco Covenant Church por tu apoyo brindado a nuestro ministerios. And basically what that says is that the Central Medico is the medical mission that is there, and um, Iglesia uh, del Pacto Evangel uh, Evangelico Emanuel is the name of Pastor Jose's church. Pastor Jose is the gentleman clear over on the right side, and he's holding his thumb up. And uh, the funda Fundación Amigos de Santiago uh, is the foundation of the Santiago Partnership, and that they are grateful for the time and the effort and the money that we gave in order for them to be um, successful in their ministries. And so um, we're giving this to the building's uh, people to find a place for this to rest. And then also, um, the first time we were there, or this last time, um, the church um, in Quito, uh, the Iglesia Casa del Oración Jesus El Salvador, uh, is the Church of Jesus Christ, uh, the Savior, and uh, they gave this. And it, in the bottom it says, for his social work and gift of service for the strengthening of the church's temple, as well as his seed of love given in the ministries. So I just wanted you all to know that um, there are multiple different things that we do in Compassion, Mercy, and Justice. Um, this is probably the most time-consuming, and uh, but it's probably one of one of many grateful things that we do. Um, I, uh, Carol also wanted me to let you know that in your bulletin there's mention about the mission garden and that we will be working on that on Wednesday if anybody wants to come help us from two till question mark. So thank you very much. At this time we're gonna celebrate offerings. So I'm gonna invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we are able to give to your kingdom. We thank you that we're able to see the work that you're doing, not just in our walls, but outside of our walls. And 
outside of our country, God. We thank you that you have blessed us all with gifts um, so that we can do work for your kingdom, whether it's monetary or with our talent or with our time. Um, we thank you, Lord, this morning that you're present in our lives, and we pray that you will just continue to use us in our church as we take your kingdom to the ends of the earth. Ushers, you may come forward. While you were holding me, you were praying prayers that only mamas do. While you were holding me, you were fighting battles your babies never knew. Ooh. And I never knew till now just how strong you were. Fighting all your tears while wiping mine. All that darkness you lived through couldn't dim that light inside of you. All the broken pieces you kept giving them to Jesus. And you gave you strength to raise me up, knowing one day I would see he was holding you while you were holding me. While you were holding me, you were showing what it means to live by faith. And you taught me to believe there is hope even in the deepest pain. I remember every day all that darkness you lived through couldn't dim that light inside of you all the broken pieces you kept giving them to jesus and he gave you strength to raise me up knowing one day i would see he was holding you while you were holding me Okay, I'm ready to go home. I've been blessed. <laughs> that was great. Um, thank everybody for oh, all they've set up here. This is just awesome. Um, as Matt told you, Pastor Matt told you, my name is Deb Bonsell. Um, I'm in Oakland, Nebraska as far as church, but I live in a village, as my grandson tells me, of Bancroft, Nebraska. Um, I have been ministering with youth since... Um, 
Yeah, I don't remember the first year. <laughs> I've been on staff at Covenant Cedars. Um, I have done a lot of things. And one day God said to me, you need to um, care more about women. Um, I saw a lot of the young girls in my church, in my youth group, go off to college and there was nothing there for them in so many places. And so um, my job that God told me to do was to work with women ministries to encourage the younger women to become a part of this. It's been a really long journey and it's not worked so well. We thought we were gaining some momentum when COVID hit. Wow, am I in the wrong place? <laughs> um, COVID has affected all of us so many ways, but it never affected God. <laughs> you know, he never changed. His word to us is still this, which is in these two verses. I, I, these are two of my favorites. Neither from my life first, but Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The other one is, that's known as the Great Commission, right? The other one, 1 Peter 4, 10. Each of you, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful servants of God stewards of God's grace in various forms. To me, these verses are spoken to all of us. You might not be a missionary that goes to a different country. I've been to Reynosa 14 times, so you're talking about Reynosa was right on for me. But he still tells us to go. That's a key word in the, commission, the Great Commission, go. Again, it doesn't mean you have to go somewhere. It means you have to do. You have to live a life and your actions have to encourage others to become disciples of Jesus Christ just as you are. We all believe that anyone who is a believer in Christ knows that God is the one and only true God. And that's what our words and actions need to say by us going. In the second verse, we have the word use. Each of you should use whatever gifts. <laughs> now, um, some of you might think you're not very talented. Well, talented and gifted aren't necessarily the same words, but each of us have an ability which is a gift from God. Whether it be hospitality, I swear my mother is one of the most hospitable people that there are. What a great example my mother was for me and is, she's still alive, in that area. We're supposed to take these abilities and serve others. Whether it be hospitality, maybe you're a really good listener so many of us, when we hear something, our brains automatically start saying, okay, what are you going to say back? But to sit and listen. One of my favorite um, comic strips has always been Winnie the Pooh. And my very favorite is when Winnie the Pooh or Eeyore, Eeyore are just sitting and they're very depressed. And little Piglet comes and says, what can I do for you? Oh, well... They will say, there's really nothing you can do. And he sits down beside them. Doesn't say a word, but he's there. And he's listening when they are ready to talk. Teaching. Into the school year right now, right? Bless those teachers. I know after working in a school that the last two weeks, actually six weeks maybe, are some of the hardest but they keep on teaching. Sometimes when we're teaching a Bible study or Sunday school or, or other things about God, it can be a little tough. But God gives special abilities to those that he has teach. Serve. 
We can serve God in so many different ways. Here at church, I don't know about you, but I feel that the person who cleans up after us every week needs a badge, you know? That's a service. And some people don't think of that as a service to God. That special ability to clean up isn't necessarily thought as a gift, but it is. We all have these gifts slash abilities. Are you using yours for God? This morning I want to share with you a little bit about Covenant My Mountain Mission Bible Camp. I almost said it backwards. <laughs> it's known as CMMBC, okay? Just as Covenant Cedars is known as Cedars, it makes it a little short. Us Americans are so good at shortening things, don't you think? Uh, but Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp. I was first to Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp in 2011 when uh, Sherry Erickson of Lincoln and I uh, and a couple other adults took some students to Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp to help them open up for the summer. Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp is a summer-only camp at this point in time, although they would like to become a year-round camp. And so in the spring, they need, need some extra help to get the buildings ready because they've been closed up all winter, okay? I also was there last year in order to prepare for what a women's, the Midwest Conference Women's Ministry is going to be doing. Our board has decided to make a partnership with them and do some work with them. A little about the beginnings of Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp because I want to tell you about the three women who really were instrumental in starting this camp. Uh, there was a lady named Gertrude Warner of Lincoln, Nebraska, and a lady named Naomi Sunberg of Stanton, Iowa, who had the vision of going to the southern mountains of the United States, which is Appalachia. And um, a lady named Violet Larson, who had been a missionary in China, uh, and the doors were closed, she couldn't go back over there, so she joined um, this mission. Um, actually, it was Gertrude and Viola who first uh, went to Jonesville, Virginia. They left uh, Chicago, Illinois um, in October of 1941 and traveled to Jonesville. Um, after meeting with the covenant offices, uh, who at first told them, well, we don't have any initiative going on in the southern mountains in that area, so there's nothing for you to do. And they both, all three of these ladies had a heart for that area and wanted to do something. Well, unbeknownst to them, a gift of $1,000, now this is in 1941, okay, $1,000 from churches in the St. Paul, Minneapolis area came in to the covenant offices with this designation for work in the southern mountains. So the ladies purchased a vehicle. Some records say that it was a 1929 Chevy sedan and other records say that it was a 1931 Ford. Regardless, <laughs> It was a little bit older car, and the ladies soon named their car Shasta. Because, you know, she has to have tires, she has to have gas, she has to have a driver. This was their car. And this car carried the women from Chicago, Illinois, to Jonesville, Virginia. To, and they also used that car to travel to the churches and the schools and the communities in that area. Um, they were joined the next year by Naomi. So what did they do first? What they first did was just go out to the communities and get acquainted with people. They wanted to minister in this area, but they needed to know more about the area and more about the people in order to know how to go about ministering to them. Um, 
When I say I've been to Reynosa 14 times, it was because we had a continuing ministry with the Peace and Grace Covenant Church in Reynosa. Reynosa. So many times mission trips are just one-time deals, and are you really helping the people or are you hurting the people? Get to know them first so that you can be a very good help to them. Over the next few years, they would be joined by more staff, usually just summer staff because they're not a year, at, even now, they're not a year-round camp. But at that time, um, they were often uh, students from North Park that would come for the summer. Um, with more staff, they were ultimately able to get into 40, 54 small rural area schools visiting twice a month because they had gone to the school board and asked if they could do Bible studies because there weren't that many churches at that time. They also did home visits with the students. They learned about the needs and how they could be the most helpful. Um, in 1943, they found a large old farmhouse on Sugar Run, that's the name of an area, <laughs> available. It was complete with a slave house, uh, barn springs, and many other interesting buildings. I don't know why that was called interesting, but other outer buildings near Jonesville. Um, and this is where the cottage Bible studies and prayer meetings were held once they were able to get this property. Um, an annual report in the, of the Mountain Mission that was in the Covenant Yearbook in 1950 said they reached over 5,000 boys and girls in the last year by visiting the schools and the homes in the area. 5,000. Churches that were started by the Home Missions Ministry um, I think I have a slide about that. I kind of forgot. Maybe not. Is there? Oh, this is the area. Sorry. If you look at this, you will see the, the, the red dot that says that's where I want to go. Uh, you will see the Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia. I mean, they're all right in there, right? That's where they are. They're at the foot of the Appalachia Mountains. Um, but in 1949, you can go to the next slide. Um, there, oh yeah, she asked uh, the car. This is a couple years later after they were there, but that's the original car. Go to the next slide. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, in 1949, they received a deed for land um, in Walnut Creek area, which is just a few miles from the, the now camp. Uh, it's called the Walnut Creek Church, and uh, I've been there. We went to Sunday services there, and, excuse me, um, the building started. It was dedicated in May of 1952, um, but they held Thanksgiving and Christmas services there in 1951, even though the building wasn't done. You'll notice that they've got the walkway and the cement and everything. When it rains, you can't park your car down where that car is parked because the water comes through. Another church, um, which the, is the next slide, is the Mulberry Gap uh, Church in Tennessee. Virginia, Tennessee, they're kind of in that area. So it's really easy to go to all three uh, states. Uh, and this one... They started a school in that area, and uh, in 1951 and 52, this building was erected and constructed by the people in the area. They didn't get any funds from the covenant offices. They did this all on their own because they felt the need was so great. Sunday school classes were held in so many areas, in schools as well as church buildings, and um, youth group meetings were also started. The Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp itself was started in 1950, 
They purchased army cots, much like Covenant Cedars used to have. If your parents went to Covenant Cedars, you slept on the army cots, which I was a counselor there for many years, and every time a kid turned over, you heard the creak, creak, creak. Yeah. Um, most of the children who attended the early camps were children from mining camp schools from, because the mining was so popular in this area. Um, it's not so much anymore. This area is just getting poorer and poorer because um, the mining has been taken over for the good of the people, <laughs> but it's been taken over by machinery, and so therefore there are not the jobs. And when you go to this area, it is absolutely devastating to see what changes have come um, because of the mining industry being different. Um, the really cool thing about many of the children that uh, the women who first started the camp and ministering in that area um, have gone on to North Park, have gone on to other Bible schools, and are doing ministry work themselves in other areas. Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp was born out of the ECC's movement to reach beyond the Swedish people they had historically supported and begin to become a denomination with a missional outreach to all Americans and just not Swedes. As we all know, the Evangelical Covenant Church started was started by Swedes and was mainly Swedes for many years. The Covenant Church I go to in Oakland actually had services in Swedish until 19, I think it was 49 or 50. Um, and we still sing a couple of songs in Swedish. Don't ask me to sing any of them because I'm not well at speaking. I don't do good at speaking Swedish, even though I'm half Swedish. Um, <laughs> these are just a few stories about the early days of the ministry in Appalachian Mountains, which was basically started by two or three women. They wanted to minister to people that they knew needed to be ministered to in an area that was very poor. Because the Appalachia area has always been a low-income area. The Midwest Conference is starting, has started, a partnership with them because we first looked at them because there was a woman from Lincoln in Nebraska and a woman from Stanton, Iowa who had started this. They're in the Midwest Conference. Let's continue ministering behind Gertrude and Naomi. God said to them, go. God said to them, use your gifts go and use. They went, and they used their gifts. Now, God doesn't always ask us to go to the other side of the United States or to start a Bible camp or to start Sunday schools or start a church. Maybe he will ask you to be a church planter. And he doesn't expect us to start big. Remember, some of these women who started the covenant that ministry in that area started by getting to know people and their needs. You can do that where, they, where you are. These women lived where the people that they wanted to minister to lived. They shared everything from conversation to tears to happiness to meals. Jesus used meals a lot to commune with people, didn't he? They went, they shared the gospel, they shared God's love everywhere they went. And they didn't always use words. Sometimes they just showed they cared. They lend a helping hand. Their gifts of caring and showing God's love was then put into action as they strove to help the people and improve their lives. There's one thing I want you to know. They went in 1941. What was, what was the United States happening? What was going on in 1941? One lady's name was Gertrude. The other's Naomi. 
many people that in that Appalachia area aren't always, don't always have access to the news, current news, and they really thought maybe these two women, women were German spies. So they had to overcome that as well. They went, they used their gifts, and they lived out their faith. Luke 17, 6 says, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. They had an old car, Shasta. <laughs> they had the funds left over from after purchasing the car of a thousand, from that $1,000, and their faith, their willingness to go, their willingness to use their gifts. God desires each of us to receive his greatest gift of all to us, which is forgiveness and eternal life. And when we accept this gift from God, he asks us to do one thing besides love him. Put your faith into action. And the gifts that he gives you. They went... They used their gifts, and they lived out their faith. So will you do the same? Ask God today to show you, today, this week, this month, what action he desires for you to take or to do to live out these first verses that I shared with you. There's something else I'd like to share with you um, today, um, and, and that's a video about the Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp. Um, like I said, they would like to become a year-round camp. Um, we're going to go, we were supposed to go this year. Um, sad to say, we only had two women sign up to go. So uh, Tamara Hutzel and I are going to go anyway, <laughs> and we're going to help them open up this spring. Um, but we are planning a trip for next year. 2024, we'll probably do the very last of May, the first part of June, um, because a lot of women that would like to go were still um, in school. Um, the, in Lincoln and Omaha schools don't get out until like Memorial Day, and we were, we're gonna leave next, su next Sunday. Um, I do wanna tell you a little bit, when you might see, you'll see this in the pictures, but their cabins are basically, um, well, the boys' cabin, yeah, this is the dining hall and the recreation building. You can go to the next one. And the chapel, that's the uh, Washington County Church. Oh, it's a video, so it's going to go in its own time. I forgot. <laughs> anyway, you'll see in this video that the boys' cabins, it looks like a machine shed. And they just have a curtain that comes down at night. It pulls over, excuse me. And the girls' cabins have, like, half walls, and then curtains that close at night. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, uh, definitely summer only, um, and their bathrooms are just cinder block, you know, buildings that, yeah, very much a summer camp. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll go ahead and play this video, and you can see a little bit about Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp.
stand with us. We're going to end by singing a song. All these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty
lift it up to you now. How sweet the sound saved a wretch like me. Oh, I was lost, lost. I was lost. Now, now I found was blind, but now I see. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Lord, I just pray for this congregation. I pray specifically right now for the mothers. Lord, I know that you have saved us. We were lost, but now we're found in you. We can give you everything, all of the broken pieces, all of the scattered pieces of our heart, of our emotions, of our physical body. Lord, all of those things that are not whole, Lord, we bring all of that to you right now. And uh, can, if you're standing next to a mother, can you just put your hand on the mother standing closest to you? And let's just lift them up right now. And let's just say a prayer for our mothers. Lord, I just pray a blessing over our mothers. I just pray that you would help them to surrender to you, surrender all to you. Because, Lord, you are great. You are good. You are kind. And I just pray right now, Lord, that your love, your grace, your goodness your kindness would flow in their hearts today. You would heal the brokenness. You would cleanse, Lord, and you would purify. Lord, the darkness, I pray that you would bring to light today, right now. And I pray that you would restore those things that have been lost and that have been broken. In Jesus' name, I pray over every mother today. I pray against the powers of the enemy that might want to lie and might want to deceive you and tell you you're not good enough and tell you that you're not right. But you are right in Jesus' name. You are whole in Jesus' name. You are pure. And you are good in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for our mothers these children call their mothers. The children are blessed because of their mothers. And I just pray that you would go with them today, Lord. With all of your love and your grace, we celebrate and we are joyful because of these women that you have placed in our lives. We are better because of them. We love you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, we want to thank you for just indulging us and in going a little bit longer this morning. We hope you were blessed today in so many different ways. Uh, we thank Deb for being with us today and sharing. And if you would like to give to Mission Mountain Bible Camp, there is a plate on the table right back there. And you can either, either drop cash in there. Or if you want to make out a check, you can make out a check to Women Ministries. And that will go to the, the right people. So... Let's, let's bless Mission Mountain Bible Camp the way that Covenant Cedars has blessed so many of us as well. Now, you've probably also seen in your bulletin that today is going to be my last Sunday to be with you until after July 5th. You will not see me here. Um, we're too small of a community for us not to bump into each other, so we're going to still see each other. But... I'm going to be really engaging, and I have a research project that I'm going to be working on while I'm on sabbatical, and I'm also going to be in Israel a third of my time. So I would just covet your prayers, prayer for me, and Sam is going to Israel with me as well. So just lift us up in prayer. I know that you're aware of what's been going on in the news. Thankfully, there's been a ceasefire in the last 24 hours, so everything is looking good there. Folks, I want to say God bless you and God be with you. Please give Pastor Mary Ruth all the support that you've given me while I'm here. I know she's going to do a great job, and we have a wonderful, wonderful lineup of speakers while I'm away. Again, blessings, and I will see you in July.